Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. Tomorrow's New Year's Eve, so right now we're going to talk about the top five Prepper Cats of 2016. We'll start with number five. The number five is the Wealth Hoarding Cat. This is the cat uh, that is hoarding silver, gold, uh, trying to take its wealth and uh, move it into whatever concentrated wealth assets that it can so that it can survive some sort of an economic calamity. It's a very effective method for any cat. Um, uh, the one weak spot in this perhaps is during an initial collapse phase. Uh, if there's not a, uh, any type of even informal economy, it might be difficult to, tr to transfer their, uh, their wealth into usable assets they need like food, medicine, etc. Things along those lines. But long term, this is a very effective method for any cat. Number four is the food focused cat. Now this cat is really focused on not starving during a, uh, a long term disaster. Uh, this is a very effective method because it's really focusing on uh, that cat's basic needs. Uh, if it has a weakness at all, it's uh, that it might uh, fail to recognize other additional threats from other cats, tigers, lions, perhaps even dogs and weasels uh, that might be coming, uh, co coming up and arising during a, uh, a disaster. Uh, but it's a very important pre prepping method and for the cats that are focused on food, um, they're going to do very well as long as they can avoid uh, interactions with other species. Number three on the list is the defense or safety oriented cat. Now, uh, this cat is oftentimes hoarding uh, a lot of uh, ammunition, weapons, things of that nature for their own personal defense. Um, whether they're uh, in a militia group, uh, you know, called a, a pride, um, or a, uh, whether they're a lone wolf, um, or in this case, a lone cat, um, that what they're, they're uh, most focused on is personal security and defensiveness. Uh, they oftentimes are also focused on um, uh, medical uh, uh, technologies uh, and, and skills that they can uh, add into their preparedness so that they, uh, if they do suffer uh, some kind of an attack from you know, weasels or um, possibly even fleas, that they have a um, uh, remediation for that. Number two on my list uh, is the social network cat, and I don't mean that they're on Facebook all day. Uh, what I what I say when I what I mean when I say the social network cat is the cat that is focused on uh, having a sort of a safety net by building up their community around them. There's a very effective way of uh, living, period. Uh, that it's the way that humans have always sort of survived, is they band together. Uh, so this is a very effective way. Now, the, that individual cat may have a broad skill set or a more narrow focused skill set, uh, but if they can integrate themselves into their cat community, uh, they are going to uh, be very successful because uh, other members in that community are going to have different skill sets uh, and that is going to carry the whole group forward. And finally, number one on the list is the cat that's just not going to make it. Not all the cats are going to make it. This one's taking the easy way out as compared to other possible routes that the cat could take post SHGM. So what are we really talking about today? We're not really talking about cats. What I wanted to talk about is, uh, well, it's the end of the year, uh, and I want to talk about preserving family memories um, uh, through a, a collapse. Uh, a lot of times in preparedness uh, websites, shows, things like that, uh, people really focus on the not dying aspect of it, and that's reasonably important. Um, but how do we preserve our culture and move it forward? And uh, one of the things that's important to me to preserve is my family photographs. Now, I, I don't print out a lot of my family photographs, they got a few on the wall, um, but uh, largely they're all digital and they're on hard drives and there's many gigabytes of those. And that's, that's great, that's fine, but we all know that there's a threat from EMP, electromagnetic pulse, which would wipe all those hard drives clean. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about preserving family memories um, in a way that uh, is not going to be destroyed if there was ever an EMP disaster. So let's talk about that. Our history and our culture, uh, you know, both of our society at large and also of our families are a really important thing to preserve uh, if there was ever a large-scale disaster or calamity. And again, of course, it's important to stay alive, but I think preserving all that stuff, like people talk about preserving the great works of art of your culture um, and all that, I think it's really important. Uh, and on a micro scale, you know, our families, you know, we, we have a history and a, and a culture within our families. I think it's important for all of us to preserve that as well. 
Um, and uh, like I said, I keep a lot of photographs on magnetic media. This is a hard drive. It's one terabyte. I keep all my photographs on here. Um, plenty of room for more. I, I probably shoot, um, I don't know, tens of gigabytes per year of photographs and videos and things like that. And it's very difficult for that to get crunched onto a disc. Um, the DVDs are only four and a half gigabytes or so. And I don't want to have like multiple discs per year and all that. It just gets kind of crazy. So what I wanted to do is be able to take all my material and just compress it down uh, to a smaller file size. So if there was ever some kind of a crazy, uh, you know, EMP event that would, you know, erase magnetic media, um, you'd still have the things preserved on an optical disc. Now, obviously, this is vulnerable to all sorts of other things like fire. Um, but at least in terms of EMP, uh, information is safe once you get it on there. One thing that was also important to me is to preserve the directory structure that I save all my files in. I, I break them up by year and then by month, and then even within a month, if there's a family vacation or something like that, I might have a folder for all the pictures in there. Um, and I also thought it was important to keep the, uh, the timestamp information. So that whenever you take a picture, if your camera is set to you know, the time and date, it'll say what time of day and what day of the week, or you know, what, what the date was when you took that picture. And I wanted to keep all that stuff. And I got this program called JPEG Compressor. Uh, I think it was like $30 or so. I got it from download. I got a trial version from download.com and then um, you know, bought the, the, the full registered version after I tested it and it worked. Um, and that does all of that for me. Uh, I can just I can do a batch um, conversion on the entire year all at once. It's a substantial size savings. You can get a lot of uh, material in just a, a small disk. Um, and it, it's just very convenient. It just makes me feel good that I, now I have my family's memories and history for the year archived in a way that if there was ever an EMP, um, they're, you know, they're, they're there and they're safe and they're an optical uh, drive. Now, obviously, um, if there was ever a large-scale EMP event, things like the computers, <laughs> they're not going to be functioning unless they were in like a Faraday cage or something like that. Um, and, and I recognize that, that I would have a bunch of disks that have data on them that I can't really read. Um, but my feeling is, is that someday, uh, you know, people will get the infrastructure back up off the ground. People will get DVD drives, uh, you know, working again. Um, and to be honest, even if they didn't, and even if that never happened, well, I don't know what never, but even if that never happened in my lifetime, it would give me a lot of comfort knowing that the family memories are at least stored somehow. Even if I can't personally access them, the idea that this could, that these memories could be, you know, passed down to future generations and that someday, you know, when people get back on their feet, they could be accessed again, uh, even if I never personally see them again. It would, if this was the only thing I kept my memories on, and this was wiped clean, I have a backup of this, and it actually isn't a Faraday cage, but I, I don't completely trust Faraday cages anyway. But if I knew that all my family's memories, you know, photographic memories, uh, anyway, were were wiped out, that that'd be a real kick in the crotch, <laughs> I think. Um, and uh, it, but it it makes me feel uh, a lot better knowing that I have stuff backed up in a way that is going to be safe from one additional danger. So that's it. What do you think? Is is this something that's important at all? I, I feel that preserving our history and our memories is something that's important. Um, you know, once you get all the, you know, bullets and beans and bread and band-aids and all those things covered, um, I, I think it's an additional thing that's important to, to consider and it's important to think about it now at the end of the year. We're going from one year to the next and boy is 2017 going to be a crazy year, I think. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching.